Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Evergene because the Evergene 2024 or at least the first release of 2024 just happened and we are looking right now, this here is Evergene. There's a lot to love about this engine. Once upon a time it was called Wave Engine, uh, now it is Evergene. They've kind of transitioned it a little bit to less advertised towards games and more towards uh, say VR, entertainment, engineering and that kind of things but at the heart it is still ultimately a game engine and it's a game engine uh, that has a lot of appeal to a number of people simply because uh, it is C-sharp based, has a lightweight editor as you see in front of you, and a component based model. So you see this guy is built out of several different components. Now there are definitely some downsides to Evergene Engine as well. Uh, specifically, this is... Um Windows only for tooling. So if you're not in the Windows ecosystem, you're not going to want to use Evergene. But if you are, uh, as you'll see here, you have uh, full physics interaction, like vehicle controls going on right here. I will show you how things interact in just a second, but first let's uh, fall to our death like so. So again, full editing environment for everything you're working on over here. You do have this component based system. So you can see this guy is a prefab made up of several different components. Now there are two major things in this 2024 release of Evergene you want to be aware of. The first one is this right here. You now have a nested prefab editor, which is very nice. So if you're working on prefabs, you've got the standalone editor for handling them. On the topic of nested prefabs, you can actually now include prefabs in other prefabs. That is a very powerful or organizational tool. So in terms of if you're wondering how this works, you can see this guy is made up of a hierarchy of various different things. You'll notice this Jeep uh, is an imported GLB file. Um, and there's the materials that are working with said file. You come on down here to the bottom, you're going to notice there is this car controller component. So again, component based engine. You can add components this way, several different built in components, as well as you can create your own. In terms of creating your own, they are created this way using code. So here we are moving over to the land of visual studio now and we'll see a little bit of how this guy is set up so over here we're gonna see our vehicle physics sample right here and let's go ahead and open that one up you'll notice we have this category called features one of those features is vehicle and that has car controller and this is how you would set up um, the code for handling a car controller so again Behavior, going to be very familiar if you're coming from a Unity background, you will find this immediately comfortable. Uh, you can actually export out, um, so you see these components are being bound out to the editor itself, all these values that are being exposed. We head on back over here and you will notice that under the car controller, update order is enabled, max force and braking are all exposed that way, and all you do is basically create them as public, and then they are now available to you. Uh, here you can see the logic, so this is handling the keyboard input for handling this guy. You see you're using a uh, keyboard, which available as a manager uh, like so uh, and then you're just checking for key states and moving around accordingly and applying the physics straightforward code straightforward approach so if you're looking for a c-sharp engine with a full editing environment and you know your comfortable unity-esque workflow but not necessarily unity while well, this one could be a good pickup for you especially because it is completely free to use which is nice it is not open source however it's one of those things to be aware of but if you do not need source code and you're okay with your development tools being windows only it is worth checking out again the new feature here is we now have this prefab editor and support for nested prefabs which is definitely uh, a nice new feature on top of that uh, we also also transitioned over to .NET 8 support. So if you're using C Sharp, that would be C Sharp 11, I believe at this point in time, as your control system. So uh, that is a quick hands-on with Evergene. Again, available for download completely free. Now let's go ahead and check out some of the details from their site. So Evergene itself is available at evergene.com. It is obviously the engine over here. You can see details of what the engine is capable of. So while your tooling is Windows only, you can actually target Android, Linux, iOS, and the web from it. Uh, and again, uh, with this release, we now have .NET 8. You see you have a number of different back-end renderers as well, including DirectX 11 and 12, OpenGL ES, as well as Vulkan. You've got a metal renderer on iOS platforms. Uh, and then as well, you've also got web. Now, interestingly enough, there's no Mac OS. And that's strange, because if you've got iOS working, you should be able to get Mac OS working, no problem. In terms of general features, PBR rendering, component-based graphics engine, uh, customizable render pipeline, uh, physics simulation, photometric light and camera, advanced post-processing effects, modern graphics API support, modern GPU particles, and the advanced animation system in place. And of course, we've also got the studio. This is your 
you know, WYSIWYG editing environment for placing things in the scene. See, WYSIWYG environment. Uh, to create and customize entities in your scene, advanced effects and material maker, post-processing graph editor, hot reload of C-sharp code, profile configurations, an asset editor, and layout customization. So those are your marquee features of Evergene. If you want to go ahead and download it, basically all that's involved is that. Basically, uh, get it free, download Evergene, no registration required, nothing else. Basically, just go ahead and download it. It does require Visual Studio 2022 as one of the requirements. Uh, and then if you're interested and you need source code access, you pay for it. If you want priority support, you pay for it. So that is the business model here. So if you want to have, you know, special help implementing your game or you do need source code assets, as access, sorry, that is where this one is monetized in particular. So what are we going to do in the 2024 release? There's actually some pretty nice new stuff in this particular release. So uh, we have the new .NET 8 template. So going forward, .NET 8 is where it's at. So again, I do believe .NET 8 is the source for C-sharp 11. Getting their versioning is getting a little bit confusing. Uh, but you have uh, that. And there's also some advancements to .NET 8, including better memory usage, uh, faster startup th times through AOT compilation, etc. cetera. Uh, also, .NET 6 is being retired in 2024. So if you're starting a new project, you're going to want to start using you know 7 or 8. I don't know why you would use 7 and not just go straight to 8. On top of that, we also have support for the uh, MetaQuest 3 platform. Uh, then the big one, again, is the new prefab editor prefab code generation and then on top of that support for nested prefab so you can take a prefab and add a prefab as a component to uh, another prefab so you can make a prefab say for a wheel and then you could have a car prefab with the wheel prefab being used inside of that one it gives you the ability to organize your code in a better way and so on uh, then we got a new image loader that is based around using skia sharp for your 2D images, uh, should have uh, some performance improvements, from actually pretty serious performance improvements as a result. Uh, we have new GLTF Draco compression support. Uh, so it is a library developed by Google for compressing and decompressing 3D geometric, 3D geometric uh, meshes and point clouds. Uh, so it reduces the size of 3D assets. You see some of the size changes there. So uncompressed, say the Dragon model goes from uh, 5,000 kilobytes to 365 or, uh, you know, about an 88% or no, I guess that would be eight times compression ratio. So it's down to 7% of the original size. Uh, we got new Evergene runtime library designed to enhance flexibility and efficiency of loading dynamic models in Evergene. Uh, loading dynamic models has always been a challenge to address this. We introduced a new runtime package that supports GLB and STL formats. These packages will allow you to handle scenarios where your models are not part of the initial application bundle. So if you want to have GLB content added after the fact, for example, or modding or something to that effect, it can be supported there. MRT, K, and XRV improvements. So if you're using this for AR applications, improvements there. Uh, and then we've got more stuff happening in the future. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Evergene 2024. I'm calling that because it is the first and maybe only release in 2024, at least major release. It was supposed to be early February, but they ended up delaying and adding more features and so on in there. Uh, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is Evergene. Again, available as a free download. Uh, it does, it, it enters into a very crowded space and there's a lot of players in that space, obviously. You've got Unity, you've got good you've got Flax, you've got um, Stride, and so on. Uh, so it is definitely a crowded space, uh, but it does have some appealing aspects to it. It is a nice, um, straightforward, clean engine to work with. The code uh, behind it is pretty good as well. Uh, if you're into a traditional component-based setup, uh, you're going to find, again, you've got a WYSIWYG-style world editor here. Unfortunately, no debugging built directly in. It's kind of all of your code is ultimately still, I believe, running through Visual Studio Code. So when you run and test your thing, you're not testing directly in the editor, but the editor is quite clean, well-designed in my opinion. So again, one of the huge flaws with this guy, of course, is that it is Windows only for tooling, although you can target Mac, uh, or sorry, Linux using uh, the, the build targets. You just can't uh, develop on those targets. It's possible you might be able to run this under um, some kind of a compatibility layer like Wine. I'm not sure. If you have run it under a compatibility layer, do let me know in the comments down below. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Evergene engine. I keep forgetting the name because it used to be called the Wave engine. Uh, these engines renaming themselves is absolutely hell in my mind. Uh, but let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.